Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Bruce Monroe Wright, uh, the chair of the Board of Trustees of the Vancouver Art Gallery. It is a thrill to see so many of you here. I know we've got uh, so many of our biggest supporters. Uh, we thank you for your excitement uh, about today's news, and we're looking so forward to sharing with you uh, our vision for the new Vancouver Art Gallery. It's, uh, I'd like to also recognize that uh, we're on the traditional Coast Salish territory. It's uh, my honor to be begin tonight's proceedings uh, by introducing Her Honor, the Honorable Judith Guichon, Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia. Your Honor, we are so pleased that you could join us for this evening. Good evening. Minister Wilkinson, Councillor Deal, Mr. Wright, Members of the board, Ms. Bartles, Mr. Wall, distinguished platform guests, and our architectural team, art enthusiasts, art critics, members of the public, journalists, donors, planners, and friends. What an exciting day. We are poised in British Columbia and in all of Canada on the brink of a new era. In 1967, we celebrated the 100th birthday of this nation, which evolved slowly, mostly, mostly through decades of conversation and mountains of documents, which took us across Great Lakes, through the prairies, and over the Great Mountains, until we became a nation from sea to sea to sea. A nation born mostly of conversation rather than confrontation. Once again, we are poised, ready to hail a monumental landmark, our sesquicentennial. We are coming of age. As a more mature society, we have an accumulation of history and rich culture that must be shared. Our great cities attract visitors from throughout the world, and we need to be able to showcase the accomplishments of our artists in suitable, accessible milieu. Our, collect our collection reflects our very rich heritage from our ancient First Nations settlements to frontier eras, including gold rushes, mining, forestry, and all the ensuing settlement. We are an evolving, inclu evolving inclusive nation, a wonderful rich soup of humanity. As such, our art is unique, diverse, and tells many stories. It is most fitting that we plan the very best opportunity to showcase this rich display to the world at large. This evening, we are privileged to get a glimpse of what that future exhibition could look like and will look like. Thank you to all those who have worked so hard to bring us to this threshold, and I wish you all the very best of good fortune for the next phase of this exciting development. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, you uh, honor us with your presence, and thank you for your kind words, and, uh, and thank you for all the hard service and work you do on behalf of all British Columbians. This is an extraordinary day in the history of our 84-year-old institution. Our city is in the midst of a cultural renaissance, one in which uh, we at the Vancouver Art Gallery are so excited to play a role as a, as a catalyst. Our exhibitions and our programs have inspired local and international communities, and our activities continue to have a positive impact on the city's economy, 
while raising Vancouver's cultural profile globally. We are working to create a remarkable new museum that will forever change the creative and physical landscape of this city. Today's presentation marks a milestone, not just for the gallery's new building project, but also for our city and our province. This evening, we unveil the conceptual design for the new Vancouver Art Gallery by world-renowned architectural firm Herzog and Demerol. This project has come together to, uh, thanks to the vision and dedication and hard work of, of so many people, including our board and our staff, artists, colleagues, patrons, and government partners. And of course, as we all know, this uh, vision and this dream will take much It'll take a lot of leadership, resources, generosity, and, uh, and the good wishes and intent and hard work of all of us. But it's important that we do it, and it's important that we commit uh, to go forward to make this dream a reality. This kind of leadership I'm talking about started with the province of British Columbia, which committed the lead gift of $50 million to this project in 2008 and in doing so, ignited our efforts to officially launch this project. For this, we are extremely grateful. And rep representing the province of British Columbia, we are honored to have uh, the, uh, Andrew Wil the Honorable Andrew Wilkinson, Minister of Advanced Education and MLA, MLA for Vancouver Quilchina. Please join me in welcome welcoming Minister uh, Wilkinson to the podium. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. And of course, most of us here know that we are on the traditional territory of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish First Nations. And that is a standard introduction when provincial representatives stand up to speak, but it's particularly salient here when we're talking about the rich cultural and visual art heritage that we enjoy in this part of the world. The province has been engaged with Vancouver Art Gallery for decades, as you know. The old provincial courthouse was uh, made available to the city on a long-term lease, specifically so that the Vancouver Art Gallery could move in, and I believe it was 1978. And more recently, in 2007, as was mentioned a moment ago, the province made the landmark seed donation of $50 million to make all of this possible. And of course, the logical next step was to have an architectural competition and come up with a proposal for the gallery, and here we are, seven or eight years later, ready to move to the next step. I think this is a time also to reflect on the importance of visual art in our society. It reflects not only our cultural heritage, our intercultural heritage, as this has become a melting pot of, of intercultural opportunities, but also the richness of the visual art that we enjoy in this part of the country. Not only our First Nations art, but we also have Jeff Wall here to talk about a, a more uh, modern and perhaps exotic form of art that he has pioneered. So we should be proud of our visual arts. We should do what we can to expand the opportunities to engage in them and to enjoy them. And of course, the Vancouver Art Gallery is essential to that. So on behalf of Premier Clark and the Governor of British Columbia, we wish you very success, great success in this project, and thank you for having us. Thank you, Minister. In 2013, the City of Vancouver came forward with the extraordinary contribution of the city-owned Larwell Park site in our thriving downtown core, just six blocks east along from the, uh, our current site and right next door. Uh, through the unanimous support of City Council, this decision was a key turning point in our project. Uh, tonight, representing Mayor Gregor Robertson is Councillor Heather Deal. Councillor Deal has been a tireless advocate upon, uh, on behalf of uh, this project and the arts from the very beginning, and we're pleased to have her with us tonight. Please welcome Councillor Heather Deal. Thanks, Bruce. It's an honor to be here tonight representing Mayor Robertson, who uh, wanted to make sure that I said that he is very sorry that he couldn't be here tonight. He's extremely supportive. And of all the councillors, I know that many of the councillors are here tonight. I don't know where you are, so uh, uh, to all of you, thank you for being here tonight. The Vancouver Art Gallery is a, is a crucial part of the arts ecosystem of the city of Vancouver, and, and we have an ecosystem that's comprised of so many different pieces of it, whether it be the economy, the people trying to move, live together in small communities throughout the city, all of the different uh, features that we do with housing. I mean, we deal with issues at City Hall every day that have to do with a myriad of issues for the city of Vancouver, and yet arts and creativity is key to so many of those things, and the Vancouver Art Gallery is a key piece of that ecosystem. 
And arts, again, are a crucial part of the ecosystem of the entire city. Um, our wealth, our health, and our happiness all are, are rely upon the arts. We've done a lot of work recently on healthy cities, and we know that arts are a huge part of that. And again, the gallery has been an enormous part of that, and they've been expanding their role. Things like Fuse have been bringing a whole new generation of people into a setting that they might not have stepped into otherwise. So I'm here tonight uh, uh, to say that in concert with all of the other ongoing programs and funding that we do at the city, we're thrilled to be here working with the Vancouver Art Gallery uh, to, uh, to launch this exciting, inspiring design and start moving it forward. And I'm just thrilled, by the way, that the design is wood. I think that's really exciting. So we're looking forward to working with the gallery to move this inspiring design forward and stand with them to secure the support that they need to make this a successful project. And the result will be a gallery that reflects all of the diversity and all the creativity of this city of ours that we love so much. I want to thank so many people. I won't go into an extensive list, but I wanted to thank the architects for the amazing vision that they've brought forward. I want to thank the Vancouver Art Gallery staff and the staff of the city of Vancouver who have been working tirelessly together and continue to do so to ensure the success of this project. And I want to thank the, the board of the Vancouver Art Gallery. You have gone above and beyond. You have provided enormous support. You just you provided the vision, and now you've come forward with the actual support for that vision that we need to thank you personally for, every single one of you. So congratulations on this landmark moment for the history of the Vancouver Art Gallery and for this entire city. I can't wait for the next step. Let's go out and make this thing happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Deal. And thank you for all you do on our behalf. Now, our goal is to raise $350 million for this project, with $150 million coming from the private sector. And that will include a $50 million endowment to sustain the operations of the new facility. And this evening, uh, I'm proud to announce that our board has come forward at this beginning stage of the capital campaign to launch it with our own gift of $23 million. And I want to I want to just take a, a moment to focus on that because I'm obviously a very proud board chair that I've got such a generous uh, group of of trustees who are uh, so supportive of this project. I've been blown away by uh, their generosity. Uh, it's given willingly. It's given with great excitement, and it's given with the knowledge that some of the key people in this city are looking at what we are doing, putting our money where our mouth is, uh, as they consider their own level of support. And we're very fortunate in this city, we don't have huge numbers, but we have some very, very generous people. Uh, but this project is gonna take unlocking uh, the generosity of many more. And so I wanted to make sure that our board made a very positive statement uh, from their own pockets as the very first announcement we make. So regardless of whatever you read in the media and regardless of what anybody says, just recognize that this recognizes an unprecedented amount for a cultural arts project in this city. And, uh, and we hope it's the first and catalyst for many more donations that'll get us to our goal and get our senior funders there and make this uh, dream a reality. I think my job is hard, but nobody has a harder job than our, our next speaker. Uh, she's a dy dynamic and talented leader that has led the Vancouver Art Gallery for 14 years, uh, elevating and transforming most everything about this institution. It's exhibitions, programs, collection, community engagement, operations, fundraising, and now it's physical presence in the city. It has taken the hard work of uh, many people to get where we are today, and we have a fantastic staff at the Vancouver Art Gallery. But uh, Kathleen, more than anyone, has led the way uh, with her vision of what the new Vancouver Art Gallery could be and what it can accomplish for this city and province and country. So please welcome to the podium the director of the Vancouver Art Gallery, Kathleen Bartels. Good evening. Thank you so much, Bruce. Welcome. I'm Kathleen Bartels, and I'm most honored to be the director of the Vancouver Art Gallery. What an exciting day. Tonight represents a very important milestone in the history of our building project. 
and I am thrilled to be sharing this moment with so many friends and supporters. My heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you. I want to express my appreciation to Minister Wilkinson, Councillor Deer, Councillor Deal, and the Honourable Judith Gishon for being part of this special occasion. And my deepest gratitude to our Board of Trustees for their extraordinary generosity. Yay. They deserve many applause tonight. Vancouver is globally unique and it is home to a major contemporary art scene and one that we all believe requires an equally major visual arts museum. A museum that will instill pride in its citizens through its powerful and welcoming architecture, through the legacies embedded in its permanent collection, through the stories told in its exhibitions, through the connections that it will make nationally and internationally, through lifelong learning that will occur for its many audiences, and through the positive impact it will make on the city and beyond. Beyond a building, the Vancouver Art Gallery is proud to be a member of the civic community. We amplify the voices of artists, we launch conversations near and far, and as a major cultural destination, we know that our exhibitions and programs leave lasting impressions about the character of our city and country on visitors from here and from around the world. We've accomplished so much in our current space, but we are literally bursting at the seams, and the time has come for a new expanded Vancouver Art Gallery. The gallery is thrilled to be at this exciting juncture in our journey towards a new building. As many of you know, our planning process began back in 2004, and it ultimately led to a decision to look for a new location. Early on, the city-owned site, Larwell Park, right next door, was deemed the most desirable. We all felt it was the ideal location for a new Vancouver Art Gallery, given its rich history and its place centered on the city's ceremonial street. We also saw the extraordinary possibilities for the linking our goals with the history of the site. The public activity was enormous there. And the gallery's vision for the new building would be to serve as that dynamic gathering place that it once was. It's amazing to look back to the very beginning of this project, how much Vancouver has changed during this time and how extraordinary the future looks for the city, including what will be a renaissance period for visual arts infrastructure, with major projects such as the new presentation house, the Polygon Gallery, Emily Carr University, the Migration East and expansion of the commercial arts sector, the Audain Art Museum in nearby Whistler, and our project. Together, we are building a future for art for generations to come. Standing here tonight, I remain more excited than ever about the many opportunities ahead for the Vancouver Art Gallery. Of course, none of this happens in a vacuum, and I'm constantly buoyed by the extraordinary support of the gallery's board of trustees and staff, my colleagues in the cultural sector, our partners in government, and the many people who believe in the importance of this civic project including our 36,000 members. And I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our community of artists who have been such a great inspiration to me and have played such a significant part in helping us reach this point. And so here we are, the big reveal. And before we begin, I'd just like to take a few minutes to quickly review the reasons why we need a new building and how this has ultimately led to the conceptual design that you are about to see. The new Vancouver Art Gallery building will allow us to more significantly contribute to the thriving cultural and civic ecology. It is about taking our exhibitions and programs and collections to the next level and providing greatly expanded opportunities for artists, educators, collectors, scholars, but also an increasingly diverse audience base. At approximately 310,000 square feet, which is nearly double our current size, the new gallery will offer 
profound new opportunities. Chief among these will be 86,000 square feet of exhibition space, more than doubling what we have now, with 40,000 square feet galleries dedicated to our cherished permanent collection, which we hold in perpetual benefit for the city of Vancouver and its citizens. These collection galleries will showcase two centuries of art making in British Columbia, from indigenous cultures, the Founders Collection, early modernism, mid-century modern art and design, the impact of international art, and the development of contemporary art here, including photoconceptualism and the art of, art of the Asia diaspora, concluding with artists, the artists of tomorrow. In rotations that will occur every three years, we anticipate showing close to 1,000 artworks from the collection at any given time. And that will include free exhibition galleries highlighting the collection. In addition, there will be a variety of temporary exhibition spaces for regional and international contemporary and historical art, including visual culture, as expressed in design, new media, and architecture. Our new facility will also allow us to more fully reflect Vancouver's role as the gateway to and from Asia by creating spaces for our recently launched Institute of Asian Art. Significantly, our new purpose-built gallery will feature dedicated spaces that we simply do not currently have. Included in these will be an expansive education center, a major artist archive, and a 350-seat performance theater that will recreate a home for live art programmed by the gallery with local and global partners. There will also be a large resource center for library research and archival activities and a state-of-the-art museum services facility that will serve as a resource for our province. And we will have ample outdoor space that will create a vibrant public realm and will build on our record of commissioning major new works by the most exciting Canadian and international artists. And now it's my distinct pleasure to speak a little bit about our design architects. Herzog and Demeron have become internationally recognized for designs that are both highly inventive and responsive to the site, geography, and culture of the place in which they are conceived. Their buildings not only effectively meet the needs of their users, but are also places that have transformed entire cities, becoming part of their cultural DNA. Think of the Tate Modern in London, the Prez Art Museum in Miami, and the National Stadium in Beijing. With 20 art museum projects completed around the world, an extensive history of working with artists, we know that they will deliver on our ambition to build a new gallery that will provide the very best setting for viewing art and embracing the public realm, with architecture that is at the forefront of museum design. For the past 12 months, we have engaged in an intensive, collaborative, and exciting conceptual design and master planning process with their team led by Christine Binswanger, senior partner. This has involved our trustees, staff, our local executive architects, Perkins and Will, many artists, colleagues, and key stakeholders, including our partners at the city of Vancouver. We have also launched a series of programs to more fully engage the public in our process. And tonight we are continuing that effort with a new installation created by other sites for artist projects. This will be located around the perimeter of the Larwell Park site, so you'll be able to see that tonight. Throughout all of this, we have spent a great deal of time examining the role of the Public Art Museum in our society. Looking back at the last several decades, there has been a major shift in how art museums define and enact their missions to engage increasingly diverse groups of visitors and to address the growing expectations of our audiences. Today, museums are expected to be places of activity, a gathering place not only for exhibitions and scholarship, but also for socializing, shopping, and just hanging out. And consider the role that architecture has played, from the Centre Pompidou in Paris that was built in the late 70s to the Tate Modern at the turn of this century. 
Clearly, museums play a pivotal role in transforming and reshaping cities, while serving as a place for discourse, discourse as agents of change, drivers of culture, and community builders. Museums can create opportunities for the entire community to, to participate, and that is certainly a key ambition for the new Vancouver Art Gallery. We have the ability to considerably enhance a re-emerging part of the downtown core, to strengthen our role as a significant economic driver for our, the entire city, augmenting the job market, and supporting the tourism industry. Our, our goal ultimately is to provide the citizens of Vancouver and all who visit with an amazing experience of art that is unique in the world and can only happen here. Before I introduce our team from Herzog and Demeron, I wanted to ask Jeff Wall to say a few words. As you all know, Jeff is an internationally renowned artist who lives and works in Vancouver. And he was born here as well, and he reminded me of that this morning. Since I joined the gallery in 2001, I've had the great pleasure to collaborate with Jeff on several exhibitions. And he has also been very involved with this project from the very beginning, serving on our architect selection committee. Jeff has shown in museums all over the world and understands from an artist's perspective the impact of architecture on how museums function. So I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thank you. Um, I think I'm here because um, Kathleen and the others feel that my point of view is probably typical of most of the artists in Vancouver. And I don't want to speak for them, but I feel like my views probably are much like everybody else's. And I thought it would be important to say tonight that the artists are extremely in involved and supportive of this idea, this project. Um, the, the, for a couple of reasons I'll mention in a minute, the idea of a new gallery is, represents a real turning point in the ability of the city to be a place where artists can develop. Um, I don't think uh, by now, because of television and the internet, I'm going to be revealing any big secrets to say that, um, to ask, again, as I asked myself this morning, when was the last time I saw a wood building rise up in the center of Vancouver? I've lived here all my life, and I've spent most of my youth and childhood and youth watching them disappear. This alone, I think, represents one of the reasons why we are in dependent upon and interested in and, and so concerned with the art of architecture. To create a building that is at least clad in wood, if not in, uh, built in wood, is to me a way to remember the city that has all but vanished over the last 50 or so years. A city that was once carved out of the forest and represented to itself its own identity. An identity that has changed and mutated over the over the decades. Um, the new design is remarkable because it brings back a memory that has almost been erased, almost been lost from the public life of this city. The city that once was, that, was, that has almost vanished, and now will come back in a new shape, or at least a symbol of it, a metaphor of it, a memory of it will come back in a new shape. And I think that's what all the arts do, whether the visual arts, theater, poetry, music, they create an appearance of something that we've forgotten about, ignored, something we dislike, something we hope for, something we fear, something that we desire, but that we can't articulate. And the artists find ways to do that. I think that with the, uh, simply the invention of a building of this type, these architects have given us something that we may not have been able to create for ourselves. These colleagues of ours from Switzerland and Belgium who came here as foreigners and saw the city in their own way and have transformed it or given us back something and created something that maybe we ourselves as Vancouver people could never have done. I think that tells me that the poem has already been written. Herzog and de Miron have already, already written a poem about Vancouver that no Vancouver writer has been able to write. That in itself already is a huge artistic achievement, regardless of what happens from here on in. I think the poem has been written, shall we say the, the, the sheet music has been written, and now it's time to hear the 
the symphony. I'll just make one more remark, which may give you information that is less well known about the function of museums in general. Um, I've had the good fortune over the last 30 to 40 years to travel everywhere because of my work. Um, and wherever I go, I go to the museums to see the collections and the exhibitions. And many, many times over this period, I've said to myself in seeing some remarkable exhibition, wouldn't it be fantastic if this exhibition could be in Vancouver? I know that because I grew up here, hungry for anything I could see, any art I could see, that the ability of people, young people, maybe particularly, to experience artworks directly, not in reproduction, not to hear about them, not to see them on the internet, but to actually experience them is decisive. And I've been in all these cities where there are multi multiple museums, where the collections are as rich as can be imagined, and I've always w thought that these things should be more visible in Vancouver. Now, many of these museums um, are built to a standard that our current building does not meet. That means that by definition, many of these exhibitions, which by nature travel and are often the result of collaborations between museums, can't come here. That means there are hundreds of opportunities that have been missed over the last years that would have provided the, all the citizens of Vancouver, all the artists of Vancouver, with experiences that uh, are, are potentially tr transformative to them. This single aspect and there are many more, but this single aspect, which I know hasn't been commented upon that much, which is why I bring it up, this single aspect is extremely important. I think you can, I hope I've explained why. The, the nature of our experience of art, the level of our experience of art, the intensity will be transformed if we can participate in, a, in the circulation of artworks around the world, which is made possible by the collaboration between museums that can collaborate. This, I think, is something that the museum will obviously accomplish. It's, among uh, uh, many of the other things, decisive. Thanks very much. So here's the moment we've all been waiting for. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Christine Binswanger, senior partner at Herzog & Demeron, and Simon Demuz, associate architect, to share the conceptual design with you for the new Vancouver Art Gallery. Thank you so much for all those words uh, we just heard. Of course, uh, you can imagine as an architect who has been involved in the art world for quite a while uh, to be able to work with the artist community here in Vancouver has been an extremely um, inspiring factor. It's also a big challenge to deliver um, what uh, has been elaborated on by Jeff right now. Uh, but obviously we will try to give our best. And uh, it's a big moment for us. I'm sure quite some of you in the audience have seen us pretty exactly a year ago. Uh, I would like to also clarify that this is not a project by Simon and myself, but it's of course a project by many other people, uh, including Jacques Herzog and Pierre Demont, um, who are working with us over there in Basel. I hand over the word to Simon, who will make a first part, and then I will take over at some point. Okay. So I want to keep this first slide short because you guys have been teased enough and you just want to see the building at this point. <laughs> but um, the last time we, we were actually at the Vogue, we were about to go to Haida Gwaii, uh, which we went to and it was really quite incredible. As, has, as have been a lot of the places that we've been able to see because of many interesting Vancouverites opening their doors to us and showing us um, showing us places that are dear to them and important in their city. So that was really already special in the last year. How much that was part of us coming here also is meeting those people. Um, 
This was a slide uh, in a studio in Haida Gwaii, which was really a, a case example of how we got access to these kind of spaces of production in this community. And that was really inspiring to see um, the role of an artist in, in those communities and the amount of craft that uh, exists there. Um, we're going to have to touch a, a, on a few aspects of the city in order to talk sensibly about the, the proposal. So this is the bit that I will try to keep as short and clear as possible. Um, we, we, this is kind of a shot that you see when you land from the airplane, which I've now done, I think, 12 times here or so. And uh, it's, I mean, it's just, it, the slide says it itself, you know, it's like this, this, this city and this nature, like these two, this really, this, this, this urbanity and then this nature, uh, which is very accessible next to it. It's, it's very green, it's, it's lush, thanks to the abundance of rain. And um, it, um, its its natural setting is kind of a defining feature uh, of the city. And maybe already now we can say that the, the downtown area where the project is, is actually interestingly kind of gray and hardscape, a lot of hardscape, in the middle of this very green carpet all around it. And um, we'll, we'll get there very quickly. But we think that this project also has an opportunity uh, to, to also introduce some of this green and this nature in this part of the city uh, as well, as in where the new site is. Um, so, of course, a defining factor of this city is the constant transformation. Um, and, and it's not just the last 20 years that everybody thinks of when they think of growth and, and Vancouver. Uh, this is a slide in the 30s, and which is actually 1930s, which is uh, about what, like a, a hundred years plus after the first kind of European settlers came to this area, and and so y you see this 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 carpet, uh, this this urban carpet that has already kind of spread to the current city limits in less than a hundred years. So it, it is a city that, like Jeff Wall said, that, that is a city that is kind of from the memory of the past. Um, I, I don't think that we want to be very nostalgic necessarily about it because it's a city that back then also was in constant transformation and growth and that's just a defining factor of your city. That, that is something that your city has, has learned to cope with. Um, 1970s, Peninsula West End is is growing. We we like the West End. We are now staying at a small hotel close to the West End, and and it's 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 uh, very interesting how this uh, um, tall this verticality is first kind of explored there and already as a housing uh, as a housing typology, um, which we think is what makes this peninsula so unique is that it is not just a central business district, which you can clearly see also here in the center, the classical kind of North American CBD. But then, uh, already back then, there's this idea of living in the vertical already on the peninsula, which is what makes the peninsula um, very um, active 24-7 and used, and, and therefore also a nice place to be on the streets and, and on its, of course, parks and stuff around it. And I, I want to say we're going to talk a bit more about the peninsula than about the rest of the city, but we're very aware that outside of the peninsula is just as much part of the city and of the urban fabric as the peninsula is. Um, but as I said, we, we want to present the building, so we're just going to keep going um, about the peninsula. So the, the, the growth that, that, that many people associate with Vancouver is indeed in these last 20 years, which is these, um, these BC Point Towers that have kind of filled the footprint of the downtown and uh, are all rising up to this kind of um, view cone uh, or view cones that are protecting various mountains that you can see from 
extremely specific points around uh, the city. We're very familiar now with those points. And the, the, uh, what's, what's interesting is that it's really just like, you know, a 3D carpet that grows up to this line. And um, it's, of course, has a certain homo homogenic quality. Uh, because when cities grow in such short amount of time, uh, the architectural style of that time is what's going to make the character of that city uh, when, when you're on the street. And, and so um, in Vancouver, that has been, of course, a building type that gives uh, its occupants incredible views of this amazing nature. So there are glass towers that are kind of narrow around a core where every flat kind of occupies a corner and you can see the, the city and the spectacular surroundings uh, around you. Um, now, that results not always in the most uh, compelling streetscape or buildings. <laughs> and, uh, but, but we don't want to be, no, but I mean, we, it's, it's, it's something that like, you know, uh, at, at night, and that's really, like, no kidding, very spectacular when you come to, to Vancouver, when, when, when the lights go, when it gets dark, and you see that there is, <laughs> and you can't. <laughs> but, no, but you can see that there's people occupying the buildings at night. So, um, <laughs> this is coming out all wrong. <laughs> But what, what we, no, no, but what I'm, I'm, I, like, I but this is actually no, like taken a lot more humorous than it is in other audiences, because this is pretty much, <laughs> no, this is pretty much what we say and we believe, which is that at night you can really see this mixed use city and it is not empty. And last night even, uh, we were on the street 11 p.m. Uh, there's always people somewhere doing something. And, and so in that sense, uh, it's not a desolate, uh, uh, town and uh, at night and, and, and in San Francisco, for example, or other cities that are equated with this pedestrian kind of lifestyle in North America, it's less like that. So I think that Vancouver is extremely kind of like uh, used uh, on a 24-hour on a cycle and you can see that here and that's of course because there has been this vision of putting a lot of housing uh, on this peninsula. And um, so in addition to that, uh, and this is also something that we already showed at the Vogue, but we, we still think is very important, is that these buildings, even though it looks like a homogeneous, uniform, generic city maybe, there is quite a lot of specificity and, 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 and different types of um, street conditions and neighborhoods within that peninsula. And maybe us coming from Europe, we, we, we see a lot of qualities in the neighborhoods where uh, the, the buildings kind of fill up the entire city block. So you get kind of a continuous uh, sidewalk with active program that, that is clear to pedestrians. So the three top drawings are an example of that versus these, um, some of the newer developments and the, the, the upcoming neighborhoods where these point towers are landing uh, uh, more loosely on the city blocks and therefore the, the sidewalk and the street frontage is not as clear and defined and you get a lot of residual uh, kind of space. So this, this is a clear example of more of these classic sidewalk uh, uh, conditions with active uses. Uh, downtown Hudson Bay being like an extreme example of that where the building really fills up the entire sidewalk and gives kind of a very clear street edge. Uh, but then you have uh, many other examples where you have more kind of ambiguous uh, setbacks and such. Normally the slide is a bit more to the right, so you can actually see that there's a building there. But there's an open space, there's kind of a lot of residual open space, windswept corners, not clear to pedestrians as to how to engage with that. And another topic already shown at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre, uh, sorry, that is today, uh, at the Vogue uh, <laughs> last year, um, is the, the topography, um, how red is where we are next door to right now, red is where the new site is, um, uh, how, how the, the peninsula is a hill and the streets slope towards the water edges from the hill 
so um, thereby creating uh, the, the city blocks are all sloped at least in one direction which is a real challenge and you see that throughout the city and you see that uh, in on the side that we are now today where we're at uh, the Queen Elizabeth uh, where uh, quite a lovely building um, uh, but a bit or disengaged from West Georgia because of this kind of uh, way that the level the elevation change was dealt with stairs uh, garage entry um, it's it's uh, it's it's a severe drop it's a, about I think 14 feet plus of high difference from the um, can be to the to the street on, on top so this is something that we also on our side have an identical identical condition to this um, here you can see the retaining wall with paintings of famous Vancouverites that we will sadly have to remove when we do the new project. Um, and then also on West Georgia, you see that. Um, West Georgia at this point in the city is really the bottom of the hill. It feels like you're kind of leaving the city. It's one way out. The city has, uh, as in the, the, the city staff, has, has ideas and visions of how to transform this part of the city outside of just having the Vancouver Art Gallery there, which we think are all very good and, 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 and uh, we, we believe that this, this neighborhood, as you will see in our proposal, will transform and has a lot of potential to no longer look like this highway on-ramp, if you will. Um, so it is a cultural corridor, it's, it's a term that you are probably familiar with. Uh, you can see that there's quite some clustering of uh, cultural buildings happening right here where we are, the library, uh, the theater we're in. Uh, the, the, the new gallery will be there, you have CBC, um, I guess the post office is also shown as part of the civic, civic buildings, although we know that that might, might change. Um, so that it is true that there is this corridor and this axis of West Georgia, but we and think that a project on this side should also address the east-west connection, um, crossing Yale Town to Gastown and to Chinatown, and there's uh, already much of that happening right now in this part of town. The neighborhoods next to it are very urban and kind of well functioning and this part of the city is still kind of waiting to become that and we think that this project uh, can be a catalyst for that to really um, stitch this site uh, into this kind of urban fabric that lies uh, next to it in all directions. There is a heritage aspect to the site there's a low building we're in right now, the Queen Elizabeth. There will be never any development on this because it's a historically preserved building. So this is kind of a, a constant and a given next to the site we've, we've, we, we are working on. And of course, there's also the Armory uh, uh, Drill Hall. The Armory Drill Hall is really the raison d'être for this site, having always been an open place for people to gather. Uh, this is also for us an inspiring picture, not just because there's public gathering, but also because you see that where we are right now, uh, we are right now, um, right there, that's where the Queen Elizabeth Theatre is now. Uh, and it we used to be a wooden two-story neighborhood around here. It's a, a, a city which uh, you, don't, you don't see anymore. It was not just a drill, a drill a site for parades, it was also a site for spontaneous gatherings. It was really kind of like a people's place for everyday Vancouverites to come. And of course, more recently, there's also large events staged there. I think the FIFA was even there uh, a few months ago. So this is really already going into the proposal. There's parameters to the site. You probably know about these. There's two thirds of the site that is um, uh, to be uh, developed as the Vancouver Art Gallery site and one-third for commercial development uh, uh, for a third-party developer for future use. Um, in addition to these two sites, uh, which we were asked to do a master plan outline for, we were also asked to look at Canby Street and uh, the Queenie Plaza uh, as part of this uh, master plan kind of proposal. Um, one big topic in this design exercise is that the Vancouver Art Gallery 
as about 300,000 square foot of reef program, uh, which means that with the density allowance, which uh, the city is, is, is looking to maximize, and we think that that's a good thing probably, uh, uh, you, you end up with 900,000, which means that you have 600,000 in the back and 300,000 in the front, which is a very kind of uh, unbalanced uh, building mass distribution. And so it's, it's, it's a real um, topic how to not make the museum dwarfed uh, next to this big development in the back. We propose the black in this slide is, is gallery program and the uh, transparent in the back is, is commercial development program. We propose to make a low courtyard structure that, uh, that, that, that uh, circles or, 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 or um, describes uh, the site of the Vancouver Art Gallery. This structure, this low structure will be a one-story structure with active accessible uh, programs that are accessible both from an open courtyard within, as well as from the sidewalk and the street uh, that goes around it. We, have the, we see this um, open courtyard as, well, we don't see it, it is a non-ticketed, public accessible open place, so the site remains permeable. Um, it's accessible from all streets, um, and the commercial development uh, program in the back here, our proposal is to create a large, we're still looking for the right word, uh, lane, we like better, better than alley, but a, like it's really a street-sized um, um, gap between the two commercial buildings, which gives the gallery still access to Dunsmuir Street. Um, so even though this is still very much a master plan outline, we think that um, this has great potential uh, to, to locate the commercial development in this manner uh, because the alternative is of course that you would do a plinth building, that you build out a plinth and you put buildings on top which means that the Vancouver Art Gallery will be uh, uh, not connected to Dunsmuir uh, and, and basically have, don't, doesn't have the site permeability that we, that we have here. Um, you see of course also here that there is uh, an idea about the Queen Elizabeth Square. These are preliminary ideas and we're testing a variety of options here, but we do think it would be great if we can find a way to make the site of the Queen Elizabeth Theatre here um, slope down with West Georgia so that it's an, uh, 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 um, a square that becomes accessible from the street and also uh, that the Queen Elizabeth Theatre together with the Vancouver Art Gallery kind of are, are together around this place that can become more of a key, a key place in, in this cultural precinct. Then, thank you. And, and we want to add to that that we still want to be able to have Oktoberfest and all these things <laughs> out, here, out here as well. How do we now fit a 300,000 square foot gallery uh, and keep the site permeable and open. Um, we propose a vertical arranged gallery structure, which um, is not dwarfed by the development around it, but actually reaches the same height. So it's three buildings on the side of the same height. And we propose to lift the building up um, 40 feet plus from the courtyard level. So that the courtyard still remains open and, 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 and uh, to from all sides of the street and that you can still walk uh, through the site. We'll go in also as to why we lift it and why the building looks uh, the way it looks now. We've had, we've had a lot tougher audiences than this. <laughs> Then um, the, the building has clearly a vertical component and it has a low component. So you can see here this low um, wooden pavilion structure that goes around the side, which is very transparent and has like activates the sidewalk and has functions in it that are accessible from the street. 
Uh, and you can see then, of course, the vertical structure that stands within the courtyard that's described by this low building. And that vertical structure is lifted up. At the bottom of this lifted, so this lifted structure is, is, is kind of a stack arrangement of the museum functions. So we arranged it as such that at the bottom of this vertical, well, stack is also not a good word, but of this vertical uh, gallery, you have more transparent uh, public active functions so that the, 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 the gallery is, you can really see the activity within the gallery from the city and of course from these places you can also look back onto the city so what is in there we have the auditorium in there we have a restaurant with large uh, covered outdoor space and and uh, we have a foyer but also museum uh, everyday museum workplaces uh, for collection management but also administration because we think it's important that you can also see the museum is a place of work it's where people work uh, every day the the top and so the, these, these, these elements on the bottom are smaller in scale, and, and we will talk about that more, because then you get daylight. You, you can get daylight all the way down onto the courtyard. Uh, the elements on top, and especially in the middle, there the volume is maximized. On the bottom it's minimized, in the middle it's maximized, because you want to have these flexible gallery floors that the curators can uh, have several scenarios of, of gallery layouts and flexibility. Um, at the top, the volume becomes smaller again, because there too, then you can get daylight onto terraces, etc. Uh, but we still have art-related programs on there. So it's a very publicly, uh, public accessible kind of three uh, vertical structure. And you see that we suggest to um, plant trees on uh, QE Square. Uh, kind of every successful boulevard uh, also needs a, a, a planted component. Uh, but of course we haven't you know, gone into detailing of the landscaping, but we want to make the statement that that square should be a square where you also like to be and not just a, a hardscape as it is today. Yeah, we could talk about wood here already, that's true, huh? <laughs> Maybe Jeff, uh, I don't know, has said most of it. I, I think for us it's kind of obvious on one hand, you know, if you look at, as you saw, the history um, of Vancouver, it was a low city that was built out of wood. And there is many buildings in this town that are have that have a wooden structure and a brick cladding or something. Uh, this might maybe be somewhat an inversion of it, also given the scale. Um, but yeah, it was. It's on one hand something that we think uh, relates it to Vancouver and British Columbia, but it's also something that makes that building uh, softer. Uh, wood, you, when you work with wood, you work in relatively small pieces, be it boards or shingles or whatever, we don't know that yet, but uh, it, will, it will come with a, with a series of details that um, you apply when you want to make wood that makes sense. You can of course also hang wood just out there, so you have hanging wood there, but that's not what we want to do. Uh, there's a craftsman uh, component, a craftsmanship component that uh, we believe comes with this material. And uh, it basically just is a, is a kind of an antithesis to an institutional building um, and to a building of that scale. And that's why we're fascinated by it and that's why we uh, want to explore it. Uh, and we know that uh, here in Vancouver and around it, uh, there is a lot of expertise, there is a lot of research going uh, on at this moment in time. Uh, a lot of it is focused towards sustainability, which of course is important for us as well. Um, but that's not the only driving factor. Our, we, there is a desire actually uh, from, a, from an expression standpoint that we think it would be amazing to make this um, pile out of wood. Yeah, and also, yeah.
and, and also, of course, the city that we described with the more homogeneous development, of which we kind of simulated already in the back there as well. Um, like we, we really think a, a gallery should look different in this context and should be recognizable as well. And of course, uh, to not do a glass gallery is, is uh, to do a wood gallery is, is something that, that does that as well. I'll go back to just to change image for one, once in a while. So we're of course um, aware that wood comes with a price. It's not as maintenance free as sheet metal or glass. Um, but there is many different ways you can do that and not only today but also historically that was the case. So uh, people burned wood, people painted wood um, and it's a whole field that we are um, looking forward to explore. As Simon said, you know that form the form of this building uh, didn't um, happen because we wanted to do this or that or the other or the other or the other that you all read already today in the newspaper what this looks like. This was, um, it, it comes out of a rationale that, the, that you want the maximum possible footprints to make very flexible gallery spaces. Um, and at the same time, create an open space underneath that has uh, sun and that has, uh, is protected from rain, about as simple as that. Then, of course, as you go up through this structure, and I think it would be um, probably too, to go too far to explain you now what is exactly on every level, but it's a mixed-used uh, building of, of, of quite a scale and so in the low parts, as already mentioned, we have an auditorium uh, that has a daylight, uh, an outdoor uh, relation, we have the restaurant, we have the workspaces, uh, we have education uh, spaces, by the way, <coughs> those go throughout, are, are located on different uh, in different locations in the building. Uh, we do not believe so much, and the gallery especially also, you know, was very strong in their conviction about this. Uh, education shouldn't be in a wing, so you have a little school, but education should actually happen where the art is next to the galleries. And that's maybe then a bit more complicated in the handling, but more interesting as an experience for um, young and older people. So education is, is a, uh, also split in, in, or is to be found in different locations in the building. The open space underneath is uh, 40 feet high. You'll see it on the picture uh, just a bit later. And you see that low structure that frames it, and that low structure that frames it has as a purpose uh, to activate the street, as was said, has a, but has also as a purpose caused to break that scale down of the building. If you're approaching, you know, it's always what is next to you is what is in your uh, first perception. And that's why those small structures are kind of a surprising first experience of I'm going uh, into a museum and I actually have seen the museum and I know it's big and it's high. So, um, in order to get that open space, that covered open space, we decided to bring people down into the lobby that lays underneath uh, that courtyard. And it has also a, a, a part of that courtyard that is actually a sunken garden. So you go down, you find yourself in the lobby where you also see those trees in the background in case you see them, I'm not sure how good that sections readable and then from there as you go through the building use actually a set of escalators three yeah. three escalators two stops to bring you to this point up here from where then you're like in the let's say main gallery portion of uh, the museum and from there on you take stairs and elevators it was important to the gallery and to us that the 
that you experience art when you enter into this complex. There's many museums where you enter and you see the ticketing and the shop and the uh, bookstore and the cafe and, uh, and then you take some kind of um, means of circulation to go to the galleries. We want to have a gallery, galleries and art uh, on the courtyard level. So these will be small scale galleries as you would find them somewhere yes, else in the city. And then you go down and you have a big footprint, the first big suite of galleries uh, in this location here. So there's like uh, about 40% of the gallery program is at below, below at the, the lower lobby level and, uh, and, and the courtyard level. And then 60% of the gallery program uh, is and when I say gallery, I mean um, exhibition, exhibition space is, is in the top portion of the building. What you also see in this section is that the, I mean, auditorium is also a boring word. It's a space for uh, uh, live uh, interaction like us tonight. I mean, it's more us acting right now, but um, let's say this is 350, so that's a scale where you can really interact uh, more than we can here. Um, but it's a very important uh, decision also that, you know, of course we were discussing uh, where does it belong and, you know, normally it should be maybe down close to the lobby and maybe into the basement. That's the normal place where you would put uh, such a function. This is more than that. This should be a place where there is uh, live performance of all kinds. Uh, that's a place where, by the way, also other people from the city might uh, do something in that space. It's accessible directly through one of those uh, pillars from the courtyard level. Uh, and it's the, it's the heart, the exchange between people and life, life art or performing arts is, uh, a core, is at the core of this building. Very important uh, statement. So you would have uh, the foyer of this uh, of this auditorium or theater or however you want to call it, at the corner of Cambia and West Georgia, you will see people when that uh, place is in use. So I have to, I have to really, I have to apologize because I, no, because I got you off track. Ah. But I think one thing that we didn't touch on is that we we talked about this topography and about this low scale. So we achieved this low scale by making this courtyard uh, structure actually slope width the slope of West Georgia. So if we go to the, uh, the plan, if you're at the entry in the middle at West Georgia, you will be at the level of the courtyard. So you can walk in straight and you can keep walking straight to Dunsmuir. When you enter from Canby, um, you have to go down a few steps, a half level, or if you enter from uh, Beatty, you have to go up a few steps. Um, so you can see that here, this is a view from West Georgia where you go straight into the courtyard. So you can already see here also on, on the right, uh, this, this glazed uh, part of this courtyard pavilion uh, is an art space from below that comes up. So this happens in some places as well. And that means that you can get daylight into these art spaces below and potentially even the opportunity for people from the street to look into these, uh, these spaces below. So the courtyard is a place for um, people to cross every day. It's part can be part of their everyday right, uh, passage, but it's also a place for specific art installations and um, a place. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I think it's important here, you know, also to. This is a space for Vancouver, and um, this is a space that is not just an in-between space, but it's actually a space that is. Uh, that has a form, that is contained, uh, where something can happen. Uh, it's a space that can, you know, some people today mentioned that can be contemplative, or, uh, but it can also be very active. And it's, you know, most of the spaces, and also the diagram Simon showed earlier, you know, where the buildings just somehow land, and then there is some in-between space, and then nobody knows what to do with it. This we wanted to avoid, to create more of that type of outdoor space. 
space where you also always have a relation to what's a surround, what you're surrounded by. You can orient yourself, but it's uh, it's always framed views. There is there is a kind of a, a middle to this whole uh, thing. That is a view as you would come in from uh, Dansmere, and you basically come perpendicular uh, to this sunken courtyard uh, we mentioned earlier. It's really the idea of making a piece, you know, of nature, and that piece is actually down there. And of course, it's, da it's down there because down there something interesting is happening. There's art down there. At the same time, you see that this low structure, you know, provides you with shade, uh, uh, provides you with uh, shelter, uh, sun, uh, rain cover. Uh, in a small scale, in an intimate scale, you could be here two people talking, you know, uh, compared to the large scale outdoor space that is, a, a, is across there. And here, this would be one of those uh, galleries that, you know, finds itself located on, in that low structure uh, around the streets. This is the actual entry. Uh, maybe we should make a little comment about where we are in the design process. Yes, yeah, so everything looks extremely buttoned up and done, but um, th this is concept design, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are design professionals. That that means that uh, there there's certain key principles that 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 we strongly believe in and that will remain. That there's a low courtyard building, that there's a publicly accessible courtyard, that it's a lifted museum and that the program is arranged in the way we, we mentioned. But of course, uh, many things will have to be explored and many, many things will have to remain flexible. So even though these, these, these look like final proposals, uh, they are not. Is that the disclaimer you want me to put in there right now? <laughs> No, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is how the project looks today. Maybe that's a good way to put it. Um, but there will be more uh, things to to um, to work on and to debate about. Uh, it's just like because right now we're in this sequence of all these fancy images that anticipate reality, which is um, something we're forced to deliver uh, in our profession at early stages of thought processes. This was to find out how many architects are in the audi audience. <laughs> um, but we love it, of course. And the truth is, with these images, you really think, uh, you know, if you force yourself to pr produce such hyper-real um, anticipation, you know, you really start to discuss how high is uh, the door. And maybe sometimes that's a bit too early, but it's it's a more interesting process than to think first you, you do urbanism at, and at the end you design the lamps. It's more interesting to go cross-wise uh, uh, in the design process. Okay, little um, detour. This is Queen uh, Elizabeth uh, Square. These are the two stairs that would bring you into the courtyard. We're obviously standing in the courtyard and this would be the doors through which you enter uh, into the Vancouver Art Gallery, and from there you go down. I think it's a, an image that, oh, and there is another uh, gallery on the ground floor here. So, I think it's an image that really shows how this is a, a, a structure that is about sharing and is about participation. Uh, it's, it's, it's open, uh, but it's not just glass, but it's really like, okay, there's, there's the Vancouver Art Gallery, but there might also be others. It's an urban structure that frames uh, that sits along the street and that um, frames that courtyard. I forgot, we forgot maybe to mention there's also uh, the uh, resource center there, that's uh, the name for ar uh, artists' archives, the library, so, you know, learning all through your life and that would also be located in such a pavilion around the courtyard. And that is when you would have taken that stair down uh, and a view of the lobby where you see that sunken garden there in the back and you see the first uh, escalator that will uh, take you up through the building. But you also see that coming down, and I think we have a plan, yeah, here. So you would come down 
uh, that's there from that entry pavilion you just saw. You have now a view of this central lobby, which of course is something that you know is really lacking in in today's um, facility that you have because it was also not built uh, for that. And so on one hand you have a generous moment of arrival with this relation to this kind of underground uh, uh, or an underground moment that is at the same time contradicted. I'll show you another picture in a second. But more, most importantly is there's a big group, uh, a big sequence of galleries at this floor, at this level. So that means you come down and after you've seen uh, eventually art in the courtyard and in some of those uh, pavilions, you come down and the first thing you see is actually the beginning of your collection. And that's of course, as was mentioned by Kathleen, one of the main purposes of the whole uh, uh, exercise uh, and one of the reasons to, to build this museum is to show uh, that amazing collection uh, and that is important for whatever, for, for here to, to have a place of identity but it's also important for people who come here because uh, if you think of uh, the art world and their interests, there is um, many reasons to come to Vancouver because of artists that are working here and uh, these people want to see their work. So, that's uh, one of those galleries that uh, are in that ring you just saw on a plan. It's a double height uh, space and it is double height in order to reach to uh, the daylight. And so you could, you would have, let's say, uh, Beatty Street here and the courtyard here. And you have, you know, although you went down, you discover a space that's actually pretty, pretty amazingly lit with daylight. That's another view of the, that sunken garden. And you see behind it, uh, or across the garden, we're standing in the lobby now, but that ring of galleries that goes around has then punctual windows again to this garden and gives you a different uh, uh, experience of, uh, or a different outdoor relation. You could have also eventually take this uh, way up in case there's something that you want to see upstairs, um, temporary shows or so. Um, and that would bring you through now a sequence of spaces where you always like you, you land somewhere, you're exposed to the outside world. This is again a view up by Georgia, the library. Uh, and you go either to the auditorium or you continue your journey uh, up. This is again as we say, conceptual, but I can just promise you we're, we will try to make beautiful escalators. <laughs> it's a view of the auditorium that would be uh, on, that on that second level in the very heart of the building with a relation to the outside that is a pretty special one. There is a cutout actually uh, through which you have a, through which the light comes from underneath. Uh, in case you leave that open, of course, you can also uh, close it, close, uh, it if you want uh, a dark space for your uh, performance. The view uh, of that restaurant terrace, it's not a proposal for the furnishing of it. <laughs> We're not going to do a mensa. A uh, mensa? Did I know that? Huh? Uh, you know, the, where you eat at school. <laughs> but we're also not going to do kind of fancy, fancy. It's going to be something in between. But I guess it's important to say it's covered outdoor space. Eh? So it's like a very generous awning and overhang that allows you to be outside even when it's potentially raining. And it's actually well oriented also in terms of sun uh, exposure. So, now we're getting to this um, upper two, uh, three level uh, gallery uh, part. And I think here we have a plan too, somewhere here. So, the, the third escalator would bring you to a space which is almost like a street, 
that goes across. So here is uh, the theater where we're in, and here uh, is actually the Towards this little screen. park next to the to the armory where you see across to uh, the Ro Rogers Arena. So it's 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 a kind of a, a trajectory uh, space from which you have all flexibility to organize your galleries, and you have twice a foot uh, a floor. Uh, two gallery suites of 10,000, but of course you can make uh, four of 5,000 or one of 20,000 you could connect here if you uh, made a particular show. Uh, so it is really a very flexible footprint and these are the four kind of pillars that you see, one of which of course has a very big art lift, uh, the others having other things you need like escalators, escape stairs, shafts and the likes. But I guess what we want to show here is that you, uh, you land somewhere and it starts to be quiet, you know, and it starts to be only about the art and not about food or shopping or anything. So that is also very important and that was also something that came strongly from the artist group which we, with which we worked and that we met many times uh, in the last year. Like, uh, we understand and we, we want a museum that is super alive, but we also want galleries that are, you know, peaceful and quiet and where it is about art. And that's kind of the beginning of this journey. Um, you see in the back, then here you would walk up and you would turn, you would overlook the outside world and you would uh, continue and get to the next floor, which has a similar uh, footprint. We have different lighting conditions and outdoor relation conditions. Um, so on this uh, level five that you just saw next to that inner street, that's a level where the windows are, where, where we have punctual windows. So not every gallery, of course. We, uh, you will also have galleries that have no windows and no skylight and no view and nothing just uh, uh, inside oriented like you have today, but we believe strongly that you need an outdoor relation not only from lobbies or cafes, but also from within the galleries. So that is one type of, um, of opening. Uh, I'll show you that window again at the end. And then as we go up, uh, because the building then become again, becomes again smaller uh, on top, you have uh, the possibility for introducing skylights, daylight from the top. And then that's the third level of those gallery, uh, of that gallery sequence on top, and that's a place where we could imagine that it's more transparent than anywhere underneath, uh, with a really uh, big glazings, uh, that of course you then can you know, work with walls that you put in front of the glass should you want to make uh, a show that needs more enclosure. Yeah. That's the window we were looking out. And that's that space we were uh, just seeing as a last, or that terrace that we saw as a last. On the last picture, I think that's it. <laughs> 